So I got another video for you here on the Sile. Um, I've had several um, people reach out to me and ask if I could do a demonstration on rigid tapping with the X7. Um, so that's what this video is going to be. Um, one of the nice things about the X7 is it comes with rigid tapping as a standard option. Um, no, no extra cost. Most machine manufacturers, it's an upcharge to be able to do rigid tapping. So. One of the things I liked about this machine when we were looking at them was that was a standard um, feature. Because I do um, a lot of parts that require a lot of tapping and so rigid tapping was an important uh, you know, consideration for us. Um, so with that, so there's, uh, there's several different things that go into it, right? So here I've got, a, I've got a, just a quarter 20 and this is what we're gonna use in the machine to do our demonstration and just do a standard tap into a standard BT30, you know, collet holder. So they do make floating heads, um, you know, uh, that have a half a millimeter or so uh, movement to, you know, if there's any misalignment, um, keep from breaking a tap. Um, I, I don't use them. Um, I've never used them. Um, if you got a machine that's set up correctly, your tooling is defined correctly, you know, and the machine's not wore out, there should be no reason um, that you can't just use rigid tapping in a solid tap holder. So, I mean, that'd be something you have to uh, take in consideration if you're doing a ton of production work, you know, you're drilling and tapping uh, hundreds of holes and parts, you know, maybe that would be, you know, something that would be useful because um, you can't control all the variables 100%. But like us here, my shop, my machine, um, you know, when we set up and you know, show you this part, like here's a part that's got these five holes that are 440 and uh, we rigid tap them, right? But, you know, we're measuring each part when it goes into the machine, we're setting the offset, so um, and we never run into trouble. So anyways, I'm kind of going on about the floating heads a little bit, but, you know, if you're in a high production environment, maybe it's a good idea. Here, got a hobby machine or do light manufacturing, I'm not sure it's, you know, it's necessary. So, so also, um, they make collets um, that are for taps. Um, this is just a quarter inch collet. You know, here's a quarter inch tab. It fits in it. you can tighten them down. H however, the tap diameters um, aren't standard sizes. So they make collets that fit the standard size. Plus they'll have a square drive in the back of the collet so that the the tap can fit in and lock in place. And that's probably a good idea to use those. Um, I don't typically use them for smaller, like quarter inch or below. Um, you know, even in harder metals, because um, you're going slow and it doesn't take a lot of force or a lot of torque. Uh, you know, your larger um, drill bit, especially if you get up around the half inch, um, if you want to see your um, power meter peg, do some half inch holes, rigid tapping, and you know, that thing will go all the way over. So anyway, so, so yeah, and they have collets um, with locking tabs in the back, floating heads, but we're gonna just focus on just standard rigid tapping. So I've also, the, the, um, the important thing in my mind is um, setting up your tooling in uh, whatever your cam software you use, right? I use Fusion here and I'm gonna go into that. That'll be the next part. I'll show you how to set a, a tap up in Fusion. Um, then we will um, machine a test block and then I'll come back at the end and talk briefly about it. But so how it works in the machine um, and how the controller does it is it syncs the RPM signal of the spindle to the Z-axis. So whatever the RPM you're tapping at, it goes through a little process before it starts to tap to kind of lock those together, um, you know, electronically, so that your feed rate matches the pitch of the tap so you don't break taps. And in my test part, um, we're gonna drill and tap nine holes at various RPMs so you can see that um, initial lockup of the spindle uh, to the Z-axis. I mean, it's not 
it's not <laughs> major, but you'll see it slow down and, and, it, and it ties those two together. So anyways, I kind of digress there a little bit, but it will jump into Fusion, then on the machine, and then I'll jump back and see you guys. So um, let me exit out of here and uh, we'll see you back um, at the end. All right, so here you can see we've got our uh, little test block set up in our vise. Holes are drilled, uh, and so we want to get ready to do some rigid tapping with it, right? So let's go over here to the tool library, and you can see here, um, let me click on the tab. So I already have tabs to find in here to make it easy when I need to, you know, grab one so they're already set. But let's go ahead and um, add one. So you guys can see how you how you have to do that. So hit add. It's going to be a right hand tap. This will be a quarter twenty. And then to the cutter information. So it's right hand. It's uh, inches. The tap we're going to use has two flutes. It's high speed steel. Obviously, it's a two fifty tap. Uh, the overall length, I think, is 2.5. The length to hold a holder is 1.3. Shoulder length, 1.25. And then the length of the flute is 1 inch. And then down here, which is the most important, most critical for rigid tapping, is the thread pitch. So let me... Uh, let me pop up my calculator here. Sorry about that. All right, here we go. So um, obviously a one uh, a quarter twenty is pretty easy, or any of the twenty um, uh, thread per inch. You know, if it's a half twenty, whatever. But so the flute length is one inch, and so you divide that by the threads per inch which in this case it's 20 and that's going to give us a pitch of 50 thousandths so let's put that in there and hit OK now let's do this again let me open this back up so if it's a 1032 right so 32 threads per inch so you take one inch divide it by 32 and then you get the pitch and obviously that's another easy one um, it's when you get some of the off you know crazy ones that that number gets you know it's not as easy to calculate uh, in your head but so you need a calculator so we got that um, the shaft information you can add the holder well, I suppose we could pick one here uh, wait a minute here select the holder cutting data um, we're gonna I'm going to do each hole on this block, but we're going to do them at a different RPM so that you can see the spindle being locked to the Z movement. Um, but we can just leave it at 500 for now. And then post-processor, this is going to go in slot number 9. At least I think that's what it's going to go into. So we hit OK. So here is our, here's the tap that we uh, just created. So we'll close that down. We go over here and uh, we're going to start doing our tapping. So we're going to select our tool and let's go back here to our taps. Here's our number nine that we just created. That's the quarter 20. We're going to turn flood cooling off on this so that we can video it. And then you can see this is the uh, spindle RPM that it was set at. But we're going to do this from low to high. So we're going to start this one at uh, 50 RPM, which is pretty slow. Select our, select our geometry. We'll do this first hole back here. And our, on our heights tab, we're going to want it to go through the bottom. And this tap to get good threads all the way through needs to be about a hundred thousandths past the bottom of the part. So we'll put a hundred thousandths in there. And then because we picked a tool that was defined at a tap as a tap, it already selected tapping. Um, tapping for us so no no changes there and then we just hit okay I'm not sure why this is staying up but uh, so if we go over here and uh, we simulate that it's gonna be real exciting 
here we go. All set. Let's exit out of that. So that's it. So then from here, you would just post it, load that into the machine, and then run the parts. But uh, let's get this thing reset up. And um, oh, check that out. My mouse is flaking out. Um, we'll get it reset up. Uh, the camera's reset up, and we'll be on the machine, and we'll show it actually uh, tapping the part. So we'll see you in a few. All right, so we got everything set up, got our work, work coordinate system set, and uh, we're getting ready here to hit cycle start. So obviously I'm filming with the door open, so I don't have flood coolant on. Certainly I want to have coolant under most circumstances. So um, with that, let's uh, fire up and uh, we'll watch it.
All right, guys, so here's our part. Um, I hope you could see what I was trying to demonstrate with the spindle locking up with the Z travel, but, um, you know, here's the holes. You can, you can look in there, I don't know if you can focus in there and see them, but they all look really nice. They all come out pretty good. I probably could have went a little bit deeper and I probably should have sprayed some WD-40 on the tap or, you know, maybe even put a little cutting oil on there since we weren't using um, any flood coolant or anything so that we could get the video. Probably could see at the end, like the last hole, there was getting some aluminum built up on the end of the tap. Um, however, luckily for us, even though it's just a test part, it didn't cause any problems. But again, if I was doing it again, I'd spray a little oil. And typically if I'm gonna do um, like rigid tapping with this 440 in here, um, I'll just put a little cutting oil, won't use the flood coolant, I'll just put a little cutting oil on the tap. Um, you know, if you're doing a ton of parts and I make some fixture plates that have a couple hundred holes in them, just just use the flood coolant, it's, it's fine. The smaller sizes, I tend to worry about them, you know, breaking easier, so, um, and, and, and they're not breaking from, um, you know, being out of sync. They're just, you know, anybody that does a lot of 440 knows they break easy, so. Um, but hopefully, um, Hopefully you learned something, or at least uh, the people that have been emailing me will get a little more understanding of what the rigid tapping is. So thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.